So I've gotten a lot of questions about how I'll be controlling the acceleration of my EV conversion now that it no longer has a gas engine. Uh, and if I'm able to just reuse the original throttle pedal that was in my 2010 Ford Escape, which is this one here, or not, uh, I am able to reuse it. Uh, but in this video, I'm going to be talking about how these throttle pedals work and how to determine the pinout of each of these pedals. In older cars, they used to have a physical cable that would run from the accelerator pedal to the throttle body. So when you press on the pedal, it would pull the cable in a way that the throttle body would open and allow more gas and more air into the engine. Uh, but most modern cars, including the cars that these two pedals came from, don't use that system. They use uh, electronic throttle control. So these two pedals are both called Hall Effect sensors. This one from a Toyota Prius, this one from my 2010 Ford Escape. Uh, and the way that these work is you give them a constant 5 volt power source and depending on how far the pedal is pressed, it'll output a uh, signal voltage between 0 and 5 volts. So when it's not pressed much at all, the voltage will be low, maybe in the 1 to 2 volt range. When fully pressed, voltage will be higher, around 4 volts generally. Uh, that voltage range does vary somewhat between pedals. You'll see this Prius pedal outputs a different voltage than this uh, Ford Escape pedal. So one way to figure out the pinout for these pedals is to just Google the part numbers, um, any one of these numbers on the pedal and see what you get online. I was able to find diagrams for both the Prius pedal and for the Ford Escape pedal online, uh, but you may not be as lucky with every pedal that you're planning on using. So one way that I've figured out to test the, these pedals is to use a current limited 5 volt supply. If you don't have access to an electronics uh, test bench, I don't. What you can also use is a USB charging brick and a micro USB charging cord that's cut open, which is what I did here. So a USB is a 5 volt standard, which makes it perfect for testing these 5 volt Hall effect sensors. Uh, so you just chop off the plug end, or the device end, of your micro USB cord and you identify which of the wires is uh, positive and negative. You can ignore the other ones. And then you can wire these up to the different connections on here until you get a proper reading from your Hall effect sensor. You'll notice that both of these pedals have six wires. Uh, that means that they're dual throw Hall effect sensors, means there's two uh, sensors in here for redundancy, so you'll have to test these twice to figure out the right pin out for each uh, of the Hall effect sensors in this assembly. The Toyota Prius pedal is a really popular choice for EV conversions. EV West sells uh, the Prius pedal on their website, and you can see the two different Hall effect sensors in the pin out here. So wiper 1 is the signal voltage for the first sensor, wiper 2 signal voltage for the second sensor. So I'm going to wire it up uh, with the 5 volt power supply that I showed a minute ago uh, with ground being connected to the black wire and the positive 5 volts connected to the red wire and then I'm going to use a multimeter to measure the voltage between ground and each of the wipers so when the pedal is not pressed at all you can see it reads a consistent 1.6 volts but when you do press the pedal you can see that voltage go up all the way to 5 volts. And for the Ford Escape pedal, when the pedal is not pressed, it reads 0.78 volts. When it's fully pressed, it goes all the way up to 4 volts. So it's a different voltage range, but it still increases as the pedal uh, is pressed further. The good thing about using a, a current limited power supply is that you're unlikely to do any damage to your Hall effect sensor. Uh, even if you do wire it up wrong, it's not going to be a big deal.